Hello, it's Sunday, July the 19th, 2020. Welcome to Virtual Sunday Worship, which this week is a shared service. The churches of the North Wiltshire Deanery, Bradenbrook, Draycott, Goresbrook, Malmesbury and Upper Avon, Upper Thames and Woodbridge are worshipping together today, separated in person but united in Christ. Throughout the service you will see contributions from representatives of each group of churches and we welcome Bishop Lee who will be reflecting on the Bible reading. We pray that you will enjoy worshipping together with others from the 31 parishes of the deanery. Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to our service of celebration for the first year of the North Wilts Mission Area. That's 31 parishes, six benefices, but one shared vision to see the Holy Spirit powerfully at work in North Wiltshire. In fact, our name, NUMA, N-W-M-A, means Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the breath of God. And what we want to see is the Holy Spirit working to bring new people into the kingdom of God, to uh, renew our churches, to grow us into confident followers of Jesus and to enable us to be the tangible presence of Jesus Christ in our communities. So a year ago, we met together in a marquee in Brinkworth to sign a covenant to work more closely together. We believe we are better together. And in this service, we're going to be uh, looking back and celebrating what's been happening in the, in the last year. But we're also going to be looking forward at the opportunities that are ahead. Later on, Bishop Lee will be speaking to us and we'll also be hearing from people who've been involved 
in some of the things that we've been doing this year. But first of all, let's start with a prayer. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us in your son, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Let's join together in singing our first hymn. A hymn which reminds us of God's faithfulness, not just over the last year, but over the years and for the years still to come. Great is your faithfulness. Let's sing together. people who would have loved to have been with us today is our lead incumbent Oliver Ross who sadly is um, in hospital at the moment but he sent us this message. Good morning and welcome to our service. It's a real privilege to have the Bishop with us today and also to be able to join together as a deanery and a mission area on this Rural Mission Sunday. I'm speaking to you from the fourth floor of the Great Western Hospital where the docs are sorting me out 
and uh, things are beginning to look good, which is great. Uh, the mission area has two things which I think are really valuable to keep hold of. The first is that we've been at this um, act of worship and witness in Christ's name for uh, over a thousand years. For most of our churches we've uh, seen all sorts of things happen down the ages. Our years of ministry and of mission uh, stand us in good stead and that the idea of the mission area is just the next chapter. The second thing is that the mission area is about better together and that when we come together we combine our strengths and uh, in many ways that's what we're doing today. The bishop asked me to uh, encourage uh, us to do mission in a different way and this is definitely happening today. So uh, it's lovely to be able to speak to you. I look forward to seeing everybody uh, when we're all unlocked and uh, free to worship together. But take care. Until then, God keep you. Bye. Earlier in the year, Catherine Bloomer from the Draycott Benefice led a lot of our thinking around um, climate change and our response to the climate emergency and produced some of the materials that we used across the mission area for our Lent Eco Challenge. And here Catherine is to talk to us briefly about the Lent Eco Challenge and what might be happening in the future. And uh, she's accompanied by Fitzy Bear who is the mascot for the Langley Fitzers Primary School um, and helped her to introduce the eco challenges for the schools in her area each week. Better Together is at the heart of the North Wiltshire Mission Area. A great example this year was our 31 churches working together on the six week Eco Lent Challenge encouraging each other to make small changes in our lifestyle to make a big difference to our world. Backing the Bristol Diocese climate justice policy and supporting our parishes to become eco-churches, we focused on areas such as our use of energy and water and how we might reduce waste. Working together as congregations alongside local groups and community organisations and in partnership with our schools, we wanted to raise awareness of green issues and inspire action such as litter picks and churchyard nature surveys. We wanted to remind people that the world is a gift of God's goodness and generosity and love and that it's our Christian responsibility to care for it, not from guilt or forcing people to change but inspired by Mother Teresa that we should do small things with great love. Although interrupted by the lockdown, this was an unexpected impetus. Everyone instantly reduced their use of transport and suddenly we valued where our food came from. Above all, many of us have renewed our connection with nature, having time to appreciate our gardens and the beautiful countryside and to be grateful for its biodiversity. The Lent challenge was not a one-off. We will go on looking for ways to continue our commitment to God's creation and bring hope to our communities. Please share your ideas and thank you for your ongoing prayers. So let's join together now in saying a psalm together. This is Psalm 86, starting at verse 11 and reading through to the end. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name for evermore. For great is your steadfast love towards me, for you have delivered my soul from the depths of the grave. O oh God, the proud rise up against me, and a ruthless horde seek after my life. 
they have not set you before their eyes. But you, Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a token of your favour that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, O oh Lord, have helped and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. One of the things that's characteristic of the missionary is the really good work that's done uh, by paid workers and volunteers um, in engaging with our schools um, and with children and young people in our communities and in our churches. And one of the big successes of the first year of the mission area has been the formation of the Dynamo network um, of uh, people who are working um, with children and young people in various settings across the mission area. And in a minute, Becky's going to tell us a little bit more about that. Um, and after that, we're going to uh, sing a song together, which just reminds us of the fact that we are um, part altogether of a bigger family, not just a family in the mission area, but also part of the family of God. Hello, I'm Becky Fisher, and I'm the rural schools and churches worker for the Gorsbrook Group. I have a particular heart for rural mission, especially amongst children, young people and their families, and I want to support all those who work with them, sowing seeds and nurturing them into strong and healthy plants so that we can continue to have an active Christian presence in each one of our communities. On behalf of the North Wilts Mission Area, I convene a group called Dynamo, and Danimo is a group of talented people, both paid workers and volunteers, who work together to share resources and enable activities to happen across the deanery that we can share. We've had some fantastic events over the last year. We all met together for a pizza and film night in Halavington. And then we visited the movement in Chippenham. We're always grateful for Malmesbury Abbey when they provide something like the Light Party or Abbey Skate. But also, small village churches can provide the focus for our events. The Lent Eco Challenge was masterminded by the Draycott Group and took place just as lockdown was beginning. And then, even though we were isolated from one another, the Woodbridge Group provided us with a fantastic prayer walk which we could use during the Thy Kingdom Come days. With ingenuity, we can work together to resource our children and young people. And I want to urge you all to help us with this work. If you've got any ideas that you think would work for us, please let us know and we'll work up some ideas together. Over the summer holiday, we're all taking part in Trevor Ranger's Big Story Club, a virtual holiday club, which will help us to maintain contact with our families during the long summer months. But perhaps the people who ought to tell you about the work are friends of mine, Ollie and Chloe. Becky teaches me about Christian values at school and in church. She especially helped me last year when I was baptised, helping me to understand the importance of being welcomed into the church. Becky, our children's worker, helps us to remember our Christian values, such as perseverance, reverence and friendship, and lots more. Becky brings in objects to help us remember our values. Thanks both at school and in family services. Some of us are big and tall, some of us are very small, some of us like pink, some like blue. 
Some of us like reading books, some of us like feeding ducks. That's because we're different, he and you. So we come now to our Bible reading and first of all the Valky family from the Upper Thames group are going to read to us the story of Moses and the burning bush and then Anne-Marie and Bessie from Woodbridge are going to do um, a craft activity related to the reading and then after that Bishop Lee will be speaking to us. One day Moses was taking care of the sheep and goats of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and Moses decided to lead them across the desert to Sinai, the holy mountain. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him from a burning bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire but it was not burning up. He said to himself, this is strange. I'll go over and see why the bush isn't burning up. When the Lord saw Moses coming near the bush, he called him by name, and Moses answered, Here I am. God replied, Don't come any closer. Take off your sandals. The ground where you are standing is holy. I am the God who was worshipped by your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses was afraid to look at God, and so he hid his face. Um, hello, my name is Jessie Clark and this is my mummy and Marie. Hi. Today we are going to be doing some Moses crafts. So first we're going to talk about making Moses. Here he is. Here he is. Hello. Uh, hello. So what do we make Moses out of, Bessie? With 
This a brown paper bag. Toilet roll, what brown paper bag? You cut a circle, where have you cut that from? Uh, from there. You drew around a plate and cut it in half. And then you need... And what did you use for his beard? One of those. Half and a cotton pad. And, and what have you got for his hair? Some of these. And then you just need to stick them together and you get that. So we've wrapped him round. But then you need to go back like in. Like that. And then you need got to his do beard the eyes. in there, eyes with a pen. Yeah. And mm. uh, his hair. And then what did you use for stuff, Bessie? Um, we just used the pipe cleaner. Pipe cleaner, and he's got his hand attached to that as well. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and then his hand. Just he's attached. He's got to pop his hair in. Where's his hair gone? Um, just his hair is here. Okay. All right, and. Um, um, so that's Moses, but he saw the burning bush. What happened in the burning bush, Bessie? Um, the burning. Bush, God was the burning bush. God yeah. appeared in the burning bush. So we've made a burning bush. It's a little um, bit like a tree. So what do we do to the toilet roll this time, yeah. Betsy? So we, we, so we cut some... Um, cut some slots on the top of the toilet roll and splayed them out. And then Bessie cut some circles out of white paper. What did you draw around to get circles? Fiery, um, I drew around this and I coloured them in fiery colours. Fiery colours. What colours are fiery colours? So, orange, red yellow anything like that and then they go in there and then you just stuff them in there scrunch them up yeah if you scrunch the two circles separately it might and open good. them out yeah it might be a bit more good but to do it quickly we will... there we go yeah so that is Moses and the burning bush. And then finally... We've got a colouring sheet for you all. A little colouring sheet with a memory vest. It's a fold and cut memory vest, uh, colouring sheet. So you can colour that in and then you need to cut in the middle across the top. If you fold it in half, then you can easily cut that way. But don't cut too far, don't cut to that line. And then at the bottom, this bottom bit folds under to give yeah. it a bit of stability. And you can cut Moses out there, and again, cut along here. And what it looks like... Is this. Is a 3D Moses and the Burning Bush little thing that stands by itself. There's yeah. one Bessie coloured earlier. And Bessie... Yeah, so, bye. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye. Bye. It's great to be with you today, so let's pray. Lord God, give us ears to hear your words to each of us today, and hearts to respond warmly and willingly to them. Amen. On Tuesday, I cycled to my local card shop in Swindon's Old Town to replenish my stock of cards for various occasions. One card soon caught my eye, a photograph looking across a field of yellow oilseed rape. This quintessentially rural image featured a pair of five bar gates in front of the field and a signpost with Ridgeway marked on arrows pointing both left and right. The card had the title Waymark on the back. Today we gather at a different kind of Waymark as we celebrate and look back on our first year as the North Wilts Mission Area. When we launched the Mission Area from a marquee on a beautiful summer's day in Brinkworth last year, none of us could have imagined how different the landscape would be in July 2020. I didn't search for a card featuring a burning bush in Old Town. Nowadays, I imagine a photo of a burning bush not being consumed by the flames, would probably find itself on Instagram before you could say Holy Moses. In the world of movie making, the passage we heard from Exodus chapter 3 would be portrayed as a key moment in an origin storyline for this singular figure in salvation history. A religious hero taking on the might of the superpower Egypt and delivering his people from slavery oppression and male infanticide. The North Wilts mission area may not yet be in the queue for a Hollywood epic, but we have our own origin story. 
which it is important we recall and return to regularly. This mission area is not only a new journey for the churches of North Wilts, it's a new venture for the Diocese of Bristol and indeed the wider Church of England. Our learning here matters and is feeding into the National Church. We're steadily gaining experience of how churches and benefices can work together more fruitfully and effectively in three mission areas at different waypoints in their journey. The Avonside Mission Area in North Bristol, the Mission Area of Yaton Froomside in South Gloucester, and the youngest here in North Wilts, a mission area coterminous with a whole deanery in a largely rural context. There is a great deal of learning that can be shared and applied across mission areas, and more significantly across the diocese. Yet each mission area also has its own chemistry, with unique challenges and opportunities. Learning involves experimenting, and the reality of discovering what takes off and what flops. Learning involves widening horizons and trying things out, testing what will take root and grow. In chapter 3 of the book of Exodus, Moses is commissioned by God. Moses has been looking after his father-in-law's flock of animals, probably a mix of sheep and goats, and just come through some pretty barren territory. He's now beyond the wilderness. But what God has in mind for him will involve a very long journey in other barren landscapes where his past experience as a shepherd will prove invaluable. What he will need to grow into is leading people who, as we are all aware, can be more difficult to work with than animals. What keeps Moses going is a certain knowledge of being called by God and sent with a clear mission. There's no going back. Thirteen months ago, in that marquee, something very special happened. Promises were made to work together. A covenant was signed and the new mission area commissioned. The derivation of the word commission, its etymology, marries together togetherness and being sent, authorised for mission. Moses was told that he needed to take off his shoes. Nobody to my memory was asked to take off their shoes in June 2019, but the signing of the covenant was indeed a holy moment. It took time to get to that point because relationships of sufficient trust and common understanding needed to be forged. Relationships will continue to develop and deepen, but that event signalled it was time to move forward together. Moses was fascinated by a bush, which was ablaze yet not consumed, and so he went closer to see what was happening. Church life can be very consuming, and not just in churches which have a great deal going on. Small churches can struggle to find the people who will keep the show on the road, if I can use that language. There are so many things which must be done that there's little energy left for creative, missional connections to be established. At one level, a mission area can be felt as adding to the things to be done agenda, certainly in the early phases. But as relationships, understanding and a sense of deeper partnership and common purpose grows, resources, people and skills become available in places where they simply weren't present before. New possibilities are tested out, and some really fly. One example is the way people have worked together to produce online material, as we have today, and services able to support ministry across the mission area. Another, the provision for children and young people. Supporting one another in these ways makes possible things which would otherwise not be sustainable, and the load carried by individuals 
reduces as others join in and play to their strengths. Relationships are built which serve communities and create opportunities for faith to be shared and grown. As I begin to come into land for my talk, I want to finish by reflecting on the way God got, no, got Moses' attention by drawing him to look at something extraordinary. The way in which churches have risen to the challenges posed by the closure of their buildings has been truly extraordinary. What might God be showing us through this? Or in the number of people with little or no church background who are connecting with us through digital technologies. At the same time, COVID-19, the crisis it has created, has brought up an extraordinary combination of economic and social issues which affect every one of us in some way. How is God looking for us to respond? In verses from chapter 3 which weren't included in today's reading, God says that he has observed the misery of my people and is sending Moses to bring them out of their misery and suffering. God obtained Moses' attention and when he had it, God revealed himself and what he needed Moses to be and to do. The Church of England, through our parochial system, seeks to provide a Christian presence for every person in every place. It's a beautiful vision, but it's so easily clouded and loses sight of the bigger canvas and possibilities, and especially that of mission. On my laptop, the synonyms given for parochial were these, narrow, closed-minded, insular, hidebound, provincial and unsophisticated, far from beautiful. We know from the life and example of Christ that my people has no limitations placed on it. We are to be here for everybody, to help them find and be found by God, to find themselves in his love, his grace and his pathways. As we work together as a mission area, God is looking for our communities to be blessed through a transformed and transforming experience of a bigger vision for life. For that, we need a bigger canvas for parochial ministry. In answer to Moses' question, who am I to be sent to relieve suffering and misery? God replies, I will be with you. Be assured and confident that God is here with you in the journey you are on in North Wilts. He is with you and will go with you and before you. We may not see burning bushes, but God will provide waypoints to draw us closer. And may that be to his glory. Amen. So we're coming now to a time of prayer and prayer is at the heart of everything that we do in the mission area. And uh, some of you, I know, will already be using our mission area prayer card um, to pray each day for the 31 parishes uh, or one of the 31 parishes in the mission area. Um, the community of St Aldhelm, which is a community of prayer, um, which has started at the Abbey, but which is open to anybody from the mission area, um, prays through uh, this, uh, this prayer card uh, each month. Uh, so that we've prayed for each parish. Um, earlier, uh, um, uh, sort of early in the life of the mission area, sort of uh, in autumn last year, um, a couple of members of the Abbey congregation, John and Jane Sunderland, uh, accompanied for part of the way by uh, John Jenkins, cycled round on, on Ride and Stride um, Saturday. They cycled round the entire mission area, all 31 uh, parishes, uh, 91 miles they cycled and they prayed at every church that they visited. And uh, that was a huge achievement and we hope that more people want to get involved in that in one way or another um, next time there's an opportunity to do Ride and Stride. But we're going to come to a time of prayer now in this service and um, I'm going to lead us in some prayers and then 
uh, David Briggs from Woodbridge Group, our Deanery Lay Chair, is going to lead us in the Mission Area Prayer. And then uh, the Reverend Mark Siddle from the Draycott Benefice uh, will lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Then we'll have our closing song and uh, a blessing from Bishop Lee before our service ends. And after our service, please join us uh, for um, virtual coffee and chat with Bishop Lee via Zoom. And uh, we'll be uh, putting the details of that up on uh, various social media platforms. And uh, hopefully it will have been in some notice sheets as well. So I do hope that you will feel able to join us. But now let's come to God in prayer. And we begin with a prayer for the day. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then a prayer based on the psalm that we read. God of mercy, who in your great love drew your son from the depths of the pit. Bring your people from death to life, that we may rejoice in your compassion and praise you now and forever. And now a prayer for rural mission on this Rural Mission Sunday. Creator God, there is so much that is strange in our lives at present. Help us to pay attention to your creation so that we may see you in the common and every day. Shepherd Jesus, as we walk through this rapidly changing world, help us to know you walk with us. If our path runs through the valley of the shadow, may we see your light and know your comfort as you lead us. Comforting Spirit, as we go about our ordinary lives, surprise us with glimpses of holy ground. Blessed Trinity, Creator, Shepherd, Spirit, surround us with your love now and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we have an opportunity to uh, just bring to God those whom we love and pray for. Those whom he's placed on our hearts at this time because they are ill or bereaved or anxious. Because they're working on the front line in the uh, care of uh, people in this Covid pandemic because they're involved in keeping our supply chains going. Lord, there are many who are carrying huge burdens at the moment. And so I just invite you in the quietness just to lift to God. Just quietly name those who are on your hearts. Father, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Deanery Mission Prayer Holy Spirit of the Living God, we pray that you would breathe through us, through our churches and through our communities, bringing new life and energy to fulfil your mission here. Father, unite us around a shared vision to see you working powerfully in North Wiltshire to bring new people into the kingdom of God. Renew our churches and grow us all into confident followers of Jesus. Let us be a tangible presence of Jesus Christ in our communities. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace and the mountains and the hills will break forth before you there'll be shouts of joy and the trees of the fields will clap will clap their hands and the trees of the fields will clap their hands and the trees of the fields will clap their hands and the trees of the fields will clap their hands while you go out with joy you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace and the mountains and the hills will break forth before you there'll be shouts of joy and the trees of the fields will clap will clap their hands and the trees of the fields will clap their hands and the trees of the fields will clap their hands and the trees of the fields will clap their hands while you go out with joy you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace and the mountains and the hills will break forth before you there'll be shouts of joy and the trees of the fields will clap will clap their hands and the trees of the fields will clap their hands and the trees of the fields will clap their hands and the trees of the fields will clap their hands while you go out with joy so let's have a moment of silence and then there'll be a final prayer and a blessing gracious and holy father we have marked and celebrated this waypoint in our shared life and witness. May we appreciate afresh your presence with us in a season of great uncertainty and fear. May we be living pointers to your Son, and through the power of your Spirit, be drawn closer together in cultivating faith, hope and strength in the communities we serve in your name. Amen. So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you and those who you love and pray for now and always. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. We continue to work across Woodbridge to gradually reopen each church in turn. Last week we held a service in Garston. Today, 19th of July, we will have evening prayer in Little Summerford at 6pm. Next week, Great Summerford will have morning prayer at 9.30am. Dauncey will hold its first service on the 2nd of August, an outdoor event, followed by Lee on the 9th of August, and finally Brinkworth on the 16th of August. Then we'll follow that rotation again every six weeks. Hopefully, the second time round, we can offer communion. Now this next bit might be news to you, or it might not, but I have been planning to take a sabbatical this year. Uh, it's been long planned, although like everything else, uh, its fate has been uncertain until recently. I am going to try and take it. So I've just got a couple more Sundays before that starts and then I will be out of circulation from the middle of August to the end of November. So in the coming days I am preparing to leave you in the capable hands of Mike and the rest of the ministry team. All will be well. I'll share with you more about my uh, plans for that time before I go away. In the meantime, take care, stay safe and God bless. <laughs>